Suddenly, it seems plant-based meat is everywhere. Grocery stores, sit-down restaurants, even fast food chains. But perhaps the world's most famous fast food chain is holding out. While Burger King, White Castle, Carl's Jr., and others are rolling out plant-based menu items, McDonald's is standing on the sidelines. The question is, does McDonald's risk falling behind its peers? Are plant-based burgers just another passing trend? Or are they a step in a fundamental change to fast food? As consumer diets continue to shift toward healthier food, plant-based alternatives are becoming more and more popular. Beyond Meat surprised investors in 2019 when its stock surged 163% on its first day of trading, pushing it to a market value of $3.77 billion. In the 12 months ending in March 2019, restaurant operators increased purchases of plant-based protein 36%. That is in an environment where foot traffic in restaurants has remained relatively flat since 2014. So who are these customers who are jumping at plant-based burgers? Well, most of them are not vegans or vegetarians. About 86% of customers eating these dishes are omnivores, just interested in diversifying their diets a bit. Impossible Foods estimates the percentage to be even higher than that. We found that, you know, the larger channel between food service and your, and your grocery store for U.S. ground beef, for example, is actually food service in the hands of professional chefs. And we thought if, if our first experiences with the meat eater, and by the way, 90 plus percent of the consumers of the Impossible Burger are self-avowed carnivores. And we knew that we wanted to target them. And we knew in order to do it, we had to know about meat eaters better than anyone else. But why are meat eaters the biggest consumers of fake meat? There are a couple of reasons. For one, people have become obsessed with protein. About 31% of consumers say they are trying to get more protein. And 14% of the population is eating some kind of plant-based protein on a regular basis. That includes dairy alternatives as well as meat alternatives. Many consumers are shifting toward meat alternatives as simply a healthier protein option which is one reason why analysts think this might be more than some momentary trend. The second is that plant-based foods are becoming more sophisticated and appealing to customers. Traditional veggie burgers started popping up on grocery store shelves in the 1980s. Restaurants added them to their menus as an easy option for vegetarian diners. But veggie burgers have also gotten a bad rap. Made with black beans, lentils, or tofu, they don't really taste like a real burger. In fact, they're usually pretty tasteless. Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods are trying to change that. Their plant-based burgers mimic actual beef's taste, texture, and look. To do that, the Beyond Burger uses pea proteins and beet juice. The Impossible Burger has its own secret ingredient, heme. The iron-containing molecule is found in our blood, as well as beef. It's what gives meat a pink color and a metallic taste. To make a vegan-friendly burger that contains the molecule, Impossible Foods uses genetically modified soy. And as an added bonus, the heme makes an Impossible Burger look like it's bleeding juices, just like a meat patty. White Castle approached Impossible Foods about adding its burger to the chain's menu a couple of years ago. It was the first deal Impossible Foods did with a fast food chain. White Castle is a regional family-owned chain that has been around for nearly a century. It has built its business selling its signature small burgers, commonly called sliders, at very low prices. A single original slider at a White Castle in New York starts at 77 cents. The Impossible Slider is $1.99. White Castle's Impossible Slider has garnered good reviews. One review in the blog, Eater, said the Impossible Slider was one of the best fast food burgers around, plant-based or otherwise. The big thing we discovered through all this is we're no longer a hamburger company. We're a slider company. And we're always gonna be true to that original taste of that original slider, 100% beef. But we're also constantly looking for what's next and what's new. And what we've seen with the success of the Impossible Slider, it gives us permission to 
get to the place that people have been craving the longest, which is vegetarian food items that taste amazing. And so uh, our ability to create that um, in, in our restaurants and for our menus is something I, I expect we're going to continue to pursue. Both Impossible and Beyond market their products to meat eaters. Looking and tasting like meat is only part of the pitch. Both companies emphasize that meat is bad for the environment. Beyond also claims that its products are healthier than meat. White Castle isn't the only one with a plant-based burger on its menu. 15% of U.S. restaurants offered meatless burgers in March, according to Technomic. So what's keeping McDonald's from offering alternative meat? Arby's has said it's sticking to its slogan, we have the meats, by not going vegetarian. For McDonald's, the thinking is a little different. A few executives have expressed a bit of wariness over the rise of plant-based food trends. You, your answer on the call about it involved complexity, right? And whether it brings another layer of complexity to the kitchen. Well, it undoubtedly does. It does, so, uh, just un in preparation. Undoubtedly does, because you've got to obviously segregate the tools you use and the grills from, from beef products, because some people you know, clearly are purchasing it because they, they are not beef eaters. So, so we know there's complexity. The question is, will the demand make it worth absorbing the complexity because it will drive the business. I mean, we had a similar discussion maybe four years ago around all day breakfast. Does, it, does the buzz feel faddish to you though? On alternative, on alternative meat? I, I, don't, I don't think it's faddish. Whether it maintains its same level of buzz, I think is what's interesting. McDonald's has tried in the past to draw customers with new products and other changes, such as its popular all day breakfast menu and premium sandwiches. But the company has been scaling back its menu recently to improve its speed of service. It's got rid of its signature crafted burgers, trimmed back its late night offerings, and told franchisees that they could modify their all day breakfast menu. Quick service restaurants, above all, need to be quick. And adding new menu items can slow service and add complexity. Success for a franchise requires maintaining that fragile balance. Fast food chains are also known for their low prices. McDonald's has its one, two, three dollar menu and the two for five mix and match deal. Meatless burgers are usually pricier than traditional patties, and McDonald's past attempts at higher priced fare, like its signature crafted burgers, haven't been successful. Another concern that could be weighing on McDonald's, supply. Impossible has struggled to keep up with soaring demand, despite adding employees and an additional shift at its manufacturing plant. As national chains sign on to add Impossible to their menus, the company has said it's having difficulty meeting demand, which means some of its early customers, smaller chains and independent restaurants, haven't always been able to get their orders filled. Beyond Meat faced similar issues in the past. Some of the proceeds from its IPO go toward investing in its manufacturing. Meanwhile, McDonald's said it is watching the plant-based trend closely. Although it doesn't have a vegan burger in the US, in Germany, the chain uses a burger supplied by Nestle. Reuters reported in June that Nestle is looking to expand its partnership with McDonald's beyond Germany and interested in potential deals with other restaurants. For now, McDonald's is holding out on offering a vegan burger. But if the plant-based trend continues to take off, a vegan option could be in the cards in the near future.